Good morning, today's lesson is 2.5. Today we're gonna to multiply using the distributive property. Our essential question, how can you use the distributive property to multiply a two digit number by a one digit number? Let's investigate. We're gonna use colored pencils and grid paper. So there's our grid paper. And you can use the distributive property to break apart numbers to make them easier to multiply. So what is the distributive property? The distributive property states that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add-in by the number and then adding the products together. So, for example, uh, A says to outline a rectangle on the grid that's a model of 6 by 13. So let's do that. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then I'm going to go down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here is my 6 by 13. So what they want you to do is they want you to think of 13 as 5 and 8. So you're going to break apart the model. So if I do that, I'm going to break apart the model 5 and 8. So I'm actually going to do this with a different color. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to cut it right here. So this half is going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm still gonna leave my six on on this side, right? I'm gonna label and shade the smaller rectangle and I'm gonna use two different colors. So this side is gonna be blue. Okay, and this side is gonna be green. I didn't do a very good job shading, but you'll do a much better job than I will. Then it says, use the distributive property. Find the product of each smaller square represents, and then find the sum of the products and record your answer. Well, if I color it in, you really can't see it very well. So let me just erase that a little bit so you can see it. I'll just kind of keep the border there. So if I'm going to find the sum of my blue squares, the blue squares is 5 times 6, 5 times 6, or you can actually count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can actually count every single square. But 5 times 6, when you know your math facts, 5 times 6 is 30. And then on my green side, I have 6 times 8. Again, I could count all the squares in here, physically count them. Or I know that 8 times 6 is 48. And then you're going to take the answer for the blue squares and the answer for the green squares, and you're going to add them together. So 48 plus the 30 equals 78. So my answer is 78. So 6 times 13 equals 78. And then if you had a hard time adding that, remember you just have to make sure that you line them up. So I just kind of did it in my head, but 8 plus 0 is 8, eight 4 plus 3 is 7. All right, so next they want us to model 6 times 13 again, but this time they want you to think of 13 as a different sum. So break apart the model to show it. So for example, so first I'm gonna draw, it's the same thing, I've got my six on this side, and over here in the big area, I've got my 13, but I wanna break it up into something that's easier. You could do it into a million ways. Um, you could do 10, I actually personally like 10 because it's an easy number, right? Oops, did I do that right? Nope, over here would be 10. So this would be 10, and then this would be three. So on one side I would get um, 6 times 10 equals 60, so this half would be 6 times 10, and then this half would be 3 times 6, 3 times 6, which equals 18, so 60 plus the 18 equals 78, so I'm getting the same thing, right? And I'm wondering if I'm confusing you here, but I can use the same color codes that I did over here, so this would be my blue so 6 times 10, this would be blue. 6 times 10 is 60. And then over here, this would be my green side, and I would have 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. So then I would have 60 plus the 18 equals the 78. Draw conclusions. Explain how you found the total number of squares in each model in steps B and C of the last problem. So I divided the first model into two rectangles, right? The first rectangle was six by six times 30, which was 60. 
and then the second rectangle was 6 by 3, which was 18. And then I added the 60 and the 18, the 60 from here and the 18, and I got 78. Next, compare the sums of products in step B and C with those of your classmates. What can you conclude? You should see that the answer should be the same with your next door neighbor as long as you broke the, the triangle apart. So, I mean, I easily could have broke the triangle into a 6 times 5 and a 6 times 8 um, because 5 plus 8 is 13, and that would have given me the 6 by 13. So as long as you're breaking it apart and you're keeping the 13 here and the 6 going this way, it doesn't matter where you decide to break it apart. Let's think smarter. To find 7 times 23, it's easier to break apart the factor 23 as 20 plus 3 or is it easier to do 15 plus 8? Let's explain. Well, for me, the 20 plus 3 is so much easier because I can I can use the uh, mental math and I can multiply by uh, multiples of 10, kind of like we were doing yesterday. So another way is to model the problem is to use the base 10 uh, blocks to show 10s and 1s. So if I'm going to do that, let's look at step 1. So use the base 10 blocks to model 6 times 13. So I have 6, 10, 1, 2, okay, so I have a 10, plus 1, 2, 3. That's my 13s. Let me kind of circle that. So this is 10, plus 1, 2, 3, that's 13. And I'm going to have 6 of them, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have 6... 13s. Does that make sense? Because each of these is 10, and then the, each of these represent 1. So I'm going to have 6 rows, 1 10 in each row, and um, 3 1s in each row. So step 2 is to break the model into 10s. So they've already done that. So I'm going to take my 10s, because these are all 10s. So I have 6 1 10s, or 6 times 10, and 6 times 10, we did this yesterday, 6 times 1 is 6, add my 0, that's 60, right? Um, and then in my ones, I've got six rows of three ones in each, and six times three is 18. So then you're going to add the tens and the ones to find the product. You're going to add the 60 plus the 18, and you're going to get 78. So six times 13 is 78. In step two, the model is broken down into two parts. Each part shows a... Sorry about that glitch. Each part shows a partial product, and the partial products were 60 and 80 because they basically we did the multiplication for this half, the multiplication for this half. This is a partial product. That's a partial product. Then I take both partial products, and I add them together, and I get my exact answer. So let's model. We're going to share and show. So we're going to draw these out. So we've got 3 times 13. So we've got to go over 13. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay, and so I want to break this up into easier parts. I personally like to do things in 10s, so if I'm going to do that, I'm going to cut it over here. So this is 3, and this is 10. Should I be, I'm going to keep it consistent. This will be my blue side of 10 and 3, so these are my blues. And then over here, my green side is going to be 3 by 3. So if I'm going to multiply them, 3 times 10. Oh, i got to keep my numbers consistent. 3 times 10 is 30. And 3 times 3 is 9. And 30 plus 3. Or, sorry, plus 9. Sorry about that. 30 plus 9 is 39. So the answer to 13 times 3 is 39. I could, if I needed to, I could add it all up. I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I would actually count 30 in this box, and I would count 9 in this box, or you could count them all together. So let's keep going with this. So let's do the next one. Um, 5 times 14. So I'm going to go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to go over to 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Make sure I match it all up. Is that 14? 
Yeah, it is. There we go. So again, I like to divide it up by tens because it's just so much easier for me. So that means I'm going to break this 14 into 10 and 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is going to be 10. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. So this side will be 4. So this is going to be 4 on this side, 10 on this side. And then we know down the middle we have our 5. So 5 times 10 is 50. I'm trying to keep my colors the same. And then 4 times 5 is 20. And then I add those together. 50 plus 20. And I'm trying to keep my colors consistent. Sorry about that. 50 plus 20 um, equals 70. Because if I do over here, 50 plus 20, 0 and 0 is 0. 5 plus 2 is 7. So the answer is 70 on this one. So now, so that's one way, right? You can use the grids, and I have plenty of that paper um, um, over by the computers. Now, on this next one, now they want to use the base 10 blocks. So again, I've got six rows of 14. So there's one row, two rows, three rows, four, five, six. And in them, I have a 10 and one, two, three, four. So there's 14 in each of these rows. So the way they did it before, remember we broke apart our tens, kind of like I did up there. So we have six times 10 on this side. And over here, we've got six times the four, individual four. Six times 10 is 60. And six times four is 24. And then to find out my whole product, I'm gonna add the 60 and the 24. So 60 plus 24. 4 plus 0 is 4, 6 plus 2 is 8, so my answer is 84. I'm going to erase some of this work. All right, so over here, again, I've got this. I should have five rows on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows, and in each row should be 18. So I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yes, and each row is 18. So now if I'm going to break them apart. Let's find out how many 10s I have. I have five tens, five times 10, and five times 10 is 50. And then over here, I have five rows of eight, right? One, two, eight, five rows of eight. So five times eight, again, as we learn our math facts, this is gonna make it so much easier for you, is 40. So my partial products are 50 plus 40, because this side is 50, this side is 40. And 0 plus 0 is 0, 5 plus 4 is 9, so my answer is 90. Again, I'm going to clean up just a little bit over here. All right, so the next problem, um, I have, again, I've got, this time I've got four rows. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and each row should have 16. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. They did, in fact, do that. So now let's do my 10s. So my tens is 10 times the four rows, which is 40. And in my ones, again, I have four rows times, and in each row I have six, and four times six, we did that over here, is 24. So now I have 40 plus 24. Four plus zero is four, four plus two is six. So my answer is 64. Okay, so on these next three problems here, I want you to do them on your own, and I want you to, you know, use the base 10 blocks, use the grid paper, whatever it does to help you use partial products um, to do those three problems. And then because we are doing the learn your math facts in seven days, um, I'm not going to have you do the, the Think Central this time for um, the math on the spot, but I do want you to go online when you are done with these three problems right here. Um, and I want you to do the seven problems that I put in Think Central for you to see how you're doing. All right. If you need me, I'm on the carpet and good luck.